Hello and welcome back to Project ML. I'm just going to do a couple of jobs on the car. Um, number one being the bulbs. Uh, the guy who had the car before me, he's fitted some LED ones. I mean, these are bright enough, the side light ones, but it looks like it's flickering, but it's not. But these bulbs um, he's put in, I think it must just have been because it's the summer. And we've not actually, obviously it's not getting dark till like 10, 10 o'clock at night. But literally, these are like non-existent. Like, I mean, if I put my hand there you would expect to see the beam there's just nothing so come a dark night and switching these on um we're gonna have nothing so obviously we'll be leaving them in but i've got some osram night breakers unlimited to go in the dip beams h7s and i've got some osram unlimited night breakers to go in here again you can fit you can't fit hids to these because when you pop them out there's not space in the back to push them back in they're a nightmare to get in and out these as well you've got to remove this trim and the whole headlight comes out so i'm just going to do them once for all i think i've got a set of chrome bulbs left over i might stick them in as well in the front but it depends i'll see see what happens and the other issue we've got this is a bit of um, advice for people on the ml owners club as you can hear i don't know if you can hear like the whining noise i'll give it a rev you can hear that I don't know if you can hear that noise. I'll turn the engine off. And just turn them lights off. I'll switch the engine off. So obviously I've been wondering this. I've been I've worked on this car for years. And about a year ago, um but uh, say six months ago, I did notice a little bit of a whine on the engine, but it was very, very minor. And I put it down to possibly the power steering pump. But it's got worse over the last few months. So anyways, I've done a bit of investigation using a stethoscope, like what the doctors use to um, check the heartbeat and all the rest of it. Um, and it definitely was no noise coming from the pump. So I thought it's got to be something down here, one of the pulleys. And this one here, which is actually in perfect view there, I'll move my finger, that is the tensioner. And not over £100. But there's nothing wrong with the tensioner. The noise is coming from that pulley there. Oh no, everybody's saying, no, we, can't, we don't sell the pulley separately. No, 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 you've got to buy the whole tensioner. So I did a little bit of research. I'm just going to pause now and go and get the part. So I have the parts here. So me, I'm not wanting to be beat. I don't see, there's nothing wrong with the tensioner. The, the belt is perfectly tensioned. It's not making any strange noises. It's just the bearings have gone in that pulley. Uh, so I did some research, measured it. And here I managed to find, I mean, if you give your reg of the car, you will not, this part will not be listed. Proper Phoebe part, original equipment. There's the number if anybody has one of these. I would imagine this would be exactly the same for the ML... This is a 350, the 320, uh, this is the 3.7 V6 petrol. I would imagine this would be the same for the 320, the 3.2. Not the diesels or the V6, V8 ones, uh, like the ML 430s and the stuff like that. Um, but I would definitely recommend looking it up. So there's your, there's your part numbers, 45875. And that to me, if you look at that, it looks exactly the same as that. But again, up to that little tricks, these manufacturers. Oh no, of course, we don't want people going. This only cost me £10, by the way, £10. Uh, we don't want people doing their own jobs on cars. So if you look in the middle of that torque, there's a little uh, like an interference thing. So this is what you need. So again, you wouldn't just be able to do this in a standard toolbox. See how it's got a hole cut out in the centre? And that goes into there to remove it. The only thing I was going to do was remove the belt while I have it off. But I'm just looking, even though it's the original Mercedes belt, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, it doesn't squeal, there's no funny noises coming from it. But I do have an original equipment take or belt to possibly put on, but I'm not too happy because I'm sure I've just seen it through, you can just see it underneath the paper there, 2375. I'm sure this is a 2370, this belt. I can't go off onto my phone now because I put my phone onto airplane mode. Um... But I will double check that. But I may or may not fit that. I don't know that. Believe it or not, that's about £25. And it's a two-minute job to change anyway. So I may just change it at a later date. Because what I wasn't expecting doing, I've just spent, what, 25 
yeah, the best part of 50 quid on getting two lots of bulbs because, like I've said, if I were, like I've said at the at the moment in the UK, we're just simply not using lights. Um, but if I'd gone through a tunnel or which I do have to do on a weekly basis, you have your lights on on this car, and there would be just simply nothing happening. So we'll get the proper lights put back into it, and that's what I'm going to do. So what I'll do is now I'll cut out the video, and when I've got everything stripped down with the headlights out and stuff, I'll come back to you. So that's up to now for what I'm doing. I don't know what else I've been. Obviously, I've had the car validated. It's looking quite nice. Have a quick walk round. Nothing special. It was only a one pound fifty wash and dry, um, which is looking nice. I've got all my gear in it now. Considering getting a tow bar on it, I've, I've just checked all the tone weights. It can tow a hell of a lot of weight. This car can. So yeah, so I'll come back to you. I might. It'll probably join onto this video, so I'll not bother with the spiel at the end of this. I'll do it when I've done it complete, so this all just goes out as one video. Thanks. Hello and welcome back to the set. Well, it's probably going to be three parts this one, because uh, I'm waiting for the bulb. So yeah, I haven't been in a front end uh, smash. The headlights are out. That's the easiest way to change bulbs on these, believe it or not. And it's not a bad job to do. Just two or three nuts and bolts and they come out. So first up, these were fitted in and i would must must admit to everybody do not use these cheap led bulbs they are absolutely rubbish unless they've got the proper big ballast packs on the back these things are absolute garbage just need put in a bin so what i've bought this time round is the these are called an h8 bulb um and i've gotten the proper osram ones the night breakers i think they're about 25 quid to put into here but the main reason with these lights is they slot in and if if it's any bigger than that like if it's got a big unit on the back the one clip into place and you've got to use it this this is for the people in the ml owners club you've got to use it as a little clip back there and what you do is you push a screwdriver through and push it forward and it pops the light out so to put it back in you need to pull the grill back and you bring the little lever forward and it secures the light in place. So that's them ones. Obviously, the two headlights are out. And I'll show you what's been fitted to these, which are rubbish. I mean, literally, you've seen on the video, I mean, the light on your phone is brighter. So this is what I'm referring to for these. They've got to clip in to the sides. You've got to remove the two little bits of trim under the headlights to get them out. But this is what's been fitted to the headlamps. These things, they're like an h7 led bulb in the absolute rubbish like i mean really really bad so i've got a set of these are h7 so i've got a set of h7 night breakers coming for them so we'll have h7 night breaker dip beam h7 night breaker fog lights and there's already the phillips led lights in and what i may do let's have a look to see if i've got them in my glove box in fact i'll get them out as a reminder are they in there or they're not they're not so i don't know what i've done with them what i have got somewhere somewhere which i need to find let's just pause the video here i think i may have them in this box no that at home what they are they're a set of chrome look indicator bulbs but i might actually just keep them for the l200 because these are new that's already in here so i'll probably leave them be so that's what i've done there and then we'll just go back under the bonnet and show you what else i've been up to So, obviously, as we've seen, I told you, if you have one of these engines, bear in mind this engine is fitted to loads of stuff, like the Chrysler Crossfires, all, the, obviously, of the Mercedes range and stuff like that. So, if you feel, if you if you hear that you've got what you think is, a, uh, like, a power steering pump, like a whining noise um, going all the time, it'll more than likely be, it'll not be a power steering pump, it's the tensioner. But there's nothing wrong with the tensioner, there's plenty of tension on the belt, it's just this little pulley wheel and the bearing goes inside of it. So I've put that new one on. That's cost us a grand sum of £10 for an original equipment part over, I'm sure probably from Mercedes, it'll be more than £200 and you're looking between £100 and £150 for a, um, like a, like a, gent, like a good quality uh, aftermarket one. So like I've mentioned, you've got to have your security talk. There's a... I think it's a, it's a 16 or a 17 mil bolt head at the bottom. You use a big bar to take the tension off. You slide a pin in, lock it out, and you take the centre out and swap them over. Belt back on, job done. So that's that done, waiting for the lights to come. What I'll do is I'll move that out the way and I'll start it up. 
It's maybe hard to tell on this video. I'm not quite sure how clear um, the sound was before, but it was certainly making... Everybody will know that sound that you get when you've got like a power steering pump on its way out, like a whining sound. It's brilliant there now, and it was always worse at high revs when you first started up. And if you listen to that now, it's perfect. What I'll do is I'll let the engine settle down to the lower idle, and I'll come back to you. There we go. It's only been a few seconds, but it's settled itself down now. And if I give it a little rev, that noise is totally gone now. There we go. It'll sound even better when it's on, an, on, a, on a lower idle. But just bear that in mind. If you get any sounds, it's that one on the tensioner. Now, I've given you the numbers on the previous video for it. So it'll save yourself some money and all you need to do is change the pulley. So I'll come back to you on this video when I've got the new bulbs fitted. And I'll get this video uploaded hopefully on the Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello and welcome back to Project ML. I am going to come back to you. The la I'll be joining this video on. I'm waiting for the bulbs to come for these. I've fitted the headlamp bulbs. I've also fitted the chrome kind of look. Indicator bulbs. The Osram Nightbreakers in the dip beam. But I had those lying about spare, which look kind of kind of cool. I haven't got like an orange look so much. It's like a rainbow effect. Waiting for the night breakers for these, so at the minute they're just staying out. But um, a lot of you will probably be aware with these is a lot of brake squeal issues on them. This car's had this issue for, for years. Uh, so I thought I would get to the bottom of it. So first of all, I've had the front brakes apart and cleaned up the calipers a bit because this has got like the Brembo style uh, front uh, calipers on it. I've also changed the front and back tyres round just to keep them right for the wear patterns and also I had some spare Mercedes um, centre badges because the other ones were getting hard up so I've changed them so I think they look quite nice that they've been cleaned up I'll show you what I use for those in a minute so like I said they're cleaned up freed off and adjusted all the front brakes switched the tyres round we'll go on to this one back the same but what I did find with it it needed new brake pads uh, at the back which I've fitted, I'll just quickly show what I've done, obviously. So with these, you've got like a pin system, and these pins get really tight, so you need to clean them up and grease them when you refit them. You've got your wear sensor, a spring clip, make sure that's not falling to bits. They're on the back of the pads, which I'll show you over on the bench. Um, you need, I'll show you what is best to use on them. So these are the old pads. When I was just inspecting them, uh, I obviously noticed that little hole there, if I get some light in there, is your wear indicator and it's almost touching the hole so for the sake of 30 quid set of new pads but the ones that i've got come with the new shims these are like a shim that uh, go on them i'll try and pull it up i'll need to use two hands as it happens these ones don't come apart but what it is you've got your shim that sits on the back the ones that i've bought these original equipment padgett ones uh, which most new cars are fitted with from the factory they come with like stainless steel ones that slide on and off so what i've done is this is definitely some stuff you want to get ceramic brake grease forget the day i mean i still use copper grease there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but this is a new thing you use now ceramic brake grease and also this stuff as well again that's like a ceramic tech like it's a ceramic grease this is more of like a use a flipping knife to butter it on to be quite honest that's what it is there it's just like a white paste and obviously what you do with that is, is you take the shim off put a smear of it on put the shim on and then another smear where the piston meets i tend to do it along this leading edge as well uh, just to stop it from getting stuck and fingers crossed that'll be the bottom of the brake squealing as well as the pins that i've mentioned uh to clean and grease those up and just make sure you push the pistons all the way back so that's that um and this stuff, Autosol, that's what I've used to clean these up. These were absolutely black. In fact, I didn't even realise it had Mercedes written on them. Um, use a bit of this. I'll tell you what it works brilliant on on these is the exhaust, because the exhaust on these are more or less stainless steel from the factory. So if you look at that now, compared to there where I haven't done it, to there, it's almost mirror finish. I mean, I know there's a bit there. If I went on for ages, I could. It's just a fact while it's on the lift. I give it a clean. I don't know. I don't think the actual, the camera's picking that up as well, but that is almost like mirror effect, as if it was like a, a new piece of stainless pipe. I know, like I've said that, but it's even cleaned some of the muck off on the inside as well. Um, you know, you could go on and get these bits off, but I just did it the fact it was on the lift while I've used it. Like I've said, I've tried cleaning these up a bit. 
Uh, also, while I've been on, these are your internal brake shoes within the disc for the handbrake. Uh, just got some high pressure air, blasted all that out of there just to stop things getting, uh, you know, kind of bound, like wound up and everything. A bit of copper grease here, there's nothing wrong with copper grease around these to stop the wheel, alloy wheels getting stuck on. And just use your time wisely while if you get the chance of using a lift somewhere or you've got your wheel off, don't just, you know, like tonight, it's a Friday night. I want to get home. It's the England, ma England match tonight. I think it's England v Scotland. Um, I just want to get home, get sorted, but just use a bit of time. Like I've said, I've cleaned up this a little bit. I've greased up everything properly as it should be. And while I've been here, I've just greased up the chassis a bit where you can't get to when you've got the wheel on, you know? Just on the shock arrow a bit, on the spring, just as a bit of clear protection. And, you know, just try and do as many bits as you can while you're on, while you've got the wheels off, you know? Um, it just... It just helps you to kind of use your time better. So, my next job for this is when, obviously, when the, when the bulbs come, I'll get the fog lights back in. And then, after that, I'm surprised. Comment on the video if you're on the ML Owners Club. Does anybody find that the throttle, uh, the way the throttle work on these is horrible? It's, like, very notchy, especially when you're in, like, slow-moving traffic. You've got to put a lot of effort onto it for it to move. Then all of a sudden, it hits a notch and then frees up. And then you obviously, you go lurch. This is like an automatic one. You go flipping, lurching forward. And it's just a horrible, notchy, non, not smooth feeling. So anyways, today I've been on to Mercedes. I do believe there's something you can do with stretching the spring on the throttle position sensor under the bonnet. But I think the cable's getting hard up and the pedal has got loads of side-to-side -side free play. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll bring the lift down a bit and I'll show you. So this is what I'm talking about in here. The pedal, do you know all that movement? And when you press it, it's like a bit more, bit more there, and then it drops. Again, pressure, pressure there, then it drops, and at that point, you're lurching forward. And I've read a few reviews to stretch the spring on the bit under the bonnet and stuff, but the, I just thought, well, I wonder how much a whole new throttle pedal assembly is and a, a new throttle cable. I was thinking, rang up Mercedes for what? 200 quid, 500 quid. No, all in with the VAT. I know I get a little bit of trade discount having a garage. It's only flipping 2% or something. It's cost us £50 for a new throttle pedal, full throttle pedal. So you get the pedal, the hinge system, where the throttle connects to it, the spring that's built into it, and a full uh, throttle cable delivered for £50. So that's my next job I'll be doing, and I'll let you know. I'm sure that a lot of you guys uh, have this problem with your MLs. It seems to be a common issue with them, and I'll let you know if it improves it. What I'm also going to do when I've done the throttle cable and the pedal, I'll show you the adjustment procedure, and if I still don't think it's very good, I might uh, stretch the spring a little bit. So there you go. I think I've listed everything on the video. I'll probably stop recording and then forget, but there me. People are asking us to show what products I use, which I have been doing as best as I can. So on my next video, when I put the headlight bulbs in, uh, the fog light bulbs in, I'll update you to let you know if the brake squeal's gone. The only thing is with the, the pedal, it's in stock, but they said that the cable isn't in stock. It's somewhere in Germany, and it could take months, weeks. They don't know, but they're going to let us know on Monday. So don't expect that throttle cable pedal video coming anytime soon because i'm obviously not going to waste my time fitting the pedal until i've got the cable it's pointless uh so yeah i'll let you have a quick look at these lights now it's down to the right level just a nice kind of mirror effect they've cleaned up lovely these headlights as well so yeah i'll keep this short because i'm going to try and put it all in one video next week when we upload it so thanks for watching i'll add this to the next bit of the video and then that'll be the end of it Right, so welcome back to the final part of the video. I'm going to make this short because all these videos have mounted up to be quite a long video in the end. So here are the two spotlights. As I mentioned, the standard bulbs in them were absolutely rubbish. These are some, what I'm on about, these cheaper uh, LED bulbs, one I've took out. They've got to be this type because the back of them, when they're in these units, like this one where it's fitted, where the way they slot in, if it's anything bigger than that, it won't slide and clip into place. They're a bit fiddly to get these in and out, to be honest. But these are what I'm replacing them with. I forgot to show the box on the other ones. So they're an H8, and these are the Osram Nightbreaker Unlimited. Now, as you can see with the bulb, it's got partly blue and partly clear with a silver tip. I think we use like a xenon gas or something inside of them. Um, unfortunately, it's the best you can do because you can't fit the bigger LED bulbs like I've just mentioned. You can't really fit HIDs to them because there's nowhere to put the, the ballast packs. So really, to get the best quality standard halogen slash xenon bulb you can get are these uh, obviously they'll have a fog light 
in H8. They do make some claims on the back, like, you know, brightness compared to a standard bulb, up to 20% more light colour, uh, slightly lower lifetime, obviously, with them being higher brightness. So I'll just kind of, I'll open the pack up and I'll kind of demonstrate what's inside. So obviously that's the bulb out the packet. You can see they're all proper type approved. They've got the seals on. And as you can see on the back, it's all, you know, proper ones made in Germany. None of this Chinese rubbish or you like that. It's, it's all stamped on it. Made in Germany. And even on the box. I think it's on the box. Um, where was it? There. You know, like your proper type approved uh, seal on them and stuff. You know you're getting the good gear with these. I'm just going to try and prop the phone up and show you what it's involved fitting them. I'm just going to have to try my best here using... I'm, I'm, I can't manage with my right arm uh, holding the phone. So obviously you just drop them in. Be careful with the bulbs. Just spin it round a bit. It will drop into place. It's hard work with this moving. Um, you get me just though, what I'm on about. Just spin it round a bit till it drops in. Obviously, obviously you can feel it drop in and then you just simply give it one quarter turn. With a little bit of light pressure. I'm, it's really difficult doing this. I'll, I'll just have to pause out. Like you feel it when they drop in, and then you just give them kind of a quarter of a turn in that in place. It's always a good idea to keep the other one next to it before dismantling it, and then that way you can see how it's slightly at an angle, and that one obviously being the other side slightly down like that, just in case it's end up being up this way or over that way. Just use the other one as a reference. So I'll do the same with the other one, and we'll go out to the car. Right, so I've got this side fitted. As you can see, it's in. Um... I did test it, make sure you test it before you put everything back together, but I'll show you what goes on at this side. So behind the grill here, you've got to just pull them back, use a thin nose set of pliers and just gently pull it and it comes away. And if you see behind here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little tab there which you push back. So when it's in, in place, you pull it forward and that secures it. But it's right up what to do on these, you've got to get these two pins located into there and then get it in as so, so you've just got to get it in from that corner, in, and then you pull that forward, and that secures it. But I'm going to do that now, instead of fiddling on, and then you just push that back into place. But always test that they're working before you put everything back together. Right, so I'll finish the video off there. We're not expecting them to be HID bright, but there's yeah, the LED side lights in. We'll put the air dip beam on. Again, they will, they're will. they not going to be like pure blue or nothing like that. But that has got a proper beam now. As I mentioned before, my hand in, in daylight, there's your proper beam image. And they are actually good because I've been through a tunnel today with these on and they did light up a lot better than what they were. We'll have a look at the fog lights. I'll turn... Uh, where is it again? Uh, I think that's them on. Let's just hope they're working. There we go. So that's them on. They don't look particularly blue, but believe me, they were a lot better than what they were. And with these, you get a much better beam pattern. To be fair, probably the mirroring effect inside of these will be getting a bit tired. But as you can see on my hand at the bottom there, this is broad daylight, proper beam, and up, proper beam pattern. So I'm quite happy with them. We'll have a quick look at the indicators. As you can see, when that switched off, they're like a rainbow kind of effect to them. And they do actually look quite good. When they're flashing, very orange. I did expect them to be quite white. Like, not as not as good as a standard orange bulb, but they're actually better. And obviously when they're off, you've got your mirror effect on them. So I'll leave the video there now. That's pretty much all the jobs done on the ML. Uh, for the moment, like I've mentioned, I've got the throttle assembly, a new, brand new throttle cable coming the new throttle pedal, the complete pedal. Uh, so when the, like I've mentioned, the, the cable's going to take a while to come. When that does come, I'll record doing that. I'm going to take the spark plug out next week and assess that. It, well, they were done about three or four years ago, but the car's not done many miles. So I'm just going to take one out and inspect it and check all the other ones are. Uh, none of them have come slack or anything like that. So... I'm trying to think as if you, I'm, I'm, I might be getting a tow bar for it. I'll record fitting that 
and a few other little jobs I've got lined up for it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy it, hit the like button, leave a comment, share, subscribe. It all helps me towards my channel. Remember, I don't get nothing for this. If you notice there's no adverts on my channel, don't make a penny for it. Purely do this for a bit of a hobby and to help people out and I suppose have a little bit of light kind of entertainment for people to watch in their spare time. And I, I thank everybody who, who already has subscribed and regularly comments and likes my videos. I thank you for that and I'll catch you next time. Bye.